from talking to other people that they can achieve their dream by coming to Portland. Um, our clinic was founded in 1989. We're the largest fertility center in Oregon. Um, we certainly are the clinic that does the most um, surrogacy cycles uh, north of San Francisco. Perhaps we do more than any clinic in San Francisco, I don't know. Uh, but I think what makes us special, besides the fact that we offer very high pregnancy rates, is we have a really great unified team. There's five people from our clinic here today. This is, and this is evidence of how we believe in our mission to help you. Um, we um, also have our own in-house egg donor agency, so you could find an egg donor through our clinic. If you don't see an egg donor that you like through our clinic, uh, support. We have collaborate with many very good egg donor agencies throughout the United States. We also have our own in-house uh, genetics lab, so if your embryos are biopsied for chromosome testing, all the analysis will be done at our clinic. We don't have to ship the embryos to a different city or, di or the cells to a different city or a different state for the analysis. Um, we're a clinic of five physicians. The, if you choose to come to our clinic, um, Dr. Bankowski, Brendan McCowski, and I would be helping you through your treatments. Um, we have six embryologists, two genetic counselors, and a staff that's of coordinators uh, that would help you, your egg donor, and your surrogate through each stage of the uh, journey. <coughs> we collaborate with many different surrogacy agencies, um, so uh, you can choose the surrogate or the agency of your choice. Um, the surrogate that you select uh, can live anywhere in the United States. Um, California and Oregon both have very good laws for surrogacy, so it's especially convenient if you do pick a surrogate uh, on the West Coast. Although you can't pick a surrogate from Washington because it's illegal in Washington. Uh, but the surrogacy agency that you work with will help you find a surrogate that might be appropriate for your needs. All of the surrogates that Northwest Surrogacy Center offers have already been medically screened by our clinic, so we feel that they're acceptable candidates. If you're interested in a surrogate from a different agency, uh, our medical staff will review the medical records of the surrogate, looking back at her obstetrical history to ensure that she doesn't have any um, conditions or medical um, uh, background that might put her at higher risk for complications in your future pregnancy. Um, the surrogate requires very little medical studies during the treatment process, so it's actually very easy to co coordinate cycles long distance. I did an embryo transfer on Wednesday for this couple um, from the UK, and their surrogate lives in Maine. And so, actually the men wanted to be there for the embryo transfer, we could have just Skyped with them. But they did fly to. Uh, <laughs> I mean, we do that a lot. Actually. But uh, they 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 did come uh, to Portland for the transfer, and their surrogate came as well. Of course. Uh, but the surrogate all had all of her initial monitoring done in Maine, and she just had to fly out to Portland to spend three days with us for the transfer. So it's it's really quite easy to coordinate these dis these treatments uh, a long distance. You could even pick an egg donor who lives in a different state. Um, and I'll give you another example. There was a, uh, a couple that I helped uh, a year and a half ago who lived in Manhattan, and their egg donor also lived in Manhattan, and their um, surrogate lived in the South Bay here. And everyone came to Portland, they had twins. Um, so we're glad to work with the egg donor and the surrogate of your choice. And we do this all the time. They, uh, we know how to coordinate the treatment process to minimize the chance of any uh, problems arising during the, during the course of the treatments. Um, you, if you were just at the last <coughs> session, you met Veronica. Uh, I didn't actually know she was going to be here today. Uh, but she uh, had twins. Uh, she delivered twins for um, this nice French couple that we helped last year. Um, now, this is uh, our success rates, and uh, I think it's uh, an important lesson from the talk today, so I hope that you'll um, keep these statistics in mind. If we place one embryo into the surrogate's uterus, uh, our ongoing pregnancy rate 
has been about 80%. And when we place two embryos into the surrogate uterus, the pregnancy rate's about 10 percentage points higher. Um, but if we put in two embryos, the chance of the surrogate becoming pregnant with twins is about 75%, so very high. For some intended parents, for some surrogates, that would be great. For others, that's not great. Um, so if you only want one baby, you should only put in one embryo. Um, <laughs> even if we put in one embryo, there's a very small chance of identical twins, because an embryo can divide into two after it's in the uterus. And just as there's a very small chance, about a 1% chance, that the circuit could become pregnant with triplets if we put in two embryos. Um, that's rare, but it does occasionally happen. Um, you will have an agreement with your surrogate whether she would carry triplets or not if she does become pregnant with a multiple pregnancy. Um, that would be part of your discussion with her and part of the contract that you arrange with her. There is a technique that can be performed at around 12 weeks of pregnancy to reduce the number of growing fetuses. It's kind of a selective abortion procedure. So that's an option if the unintended multiple pregnancy occurs. Um, we're very proud of our pregnancy rates, um, and our pregnancy rates have been very stable for many years. Um, and um, uh, because our pregnancy rates are high, you should have every reason to be optimistic. Of all the people that we help have children, your chances are higher than anyone that we help. Um, and um, so that's what makes it exciting. It makes it exciting for us, and it makes it exciting for, for you and, and your surrogate as well. Um, but unfortunately, if we look at the experiences of, of patients, of future parents, not everyone does achieve a pregnancy. And certainly, the whole process of going through egg donation and surrogacy is one that's very, very expensive. Um, so I would advise you to be very careful in your selection. Um, to, to be careful with the, uh, in picking your clinic, in picking your surrogacy agency or your surrogate. But the bottom line is the pregnancy rate is primarily influenced by the work of the clinic. Um, so it's the clinic's responsibility to give you your optimal outcome. Not every embryo lab provides the same environment for embryos to grow. Not all physicians treat patients exactly the same way. If you wanted to compare the success rates among fertility clinics in the United States, you can look at the internet. Um, there are two websites, the CDC website and a website called SART that lists the, um, the pregnancy success rates among fertility clinics in the United States. This is actually the one that's the easier one to read if you're looking at the internet. SART stands for Society for Assisted Reproductive Technology. It's our professional organization, and clinics throughout the United States submit their data every year to the CDC so that the results can be analyzed. So if you look at this SART website, you can click on California, you can click on Oregon, and you'll see the clinics in the different states. And then you can click on the clinics and look at the success rates, the by birth rates, in egg donor cycles. Those will include egg donor cycles where the embryo is placed into a surrogate, into an infertile woman's uterus. So the pregnancy rates are going to be slightly lower than your rate, because your rate should be higher than that, because actually when we use a surrogate, the pregnancy rates are a little higher than if we were to put the embryo into a 45-year-old infertile woman for her to become pregnant. Um, so it's a way of kind of getting an idea in terms of the success rates, and you'll see the success rates vary a lot. The average egg donor live birth rate in the United States is around 55%, but our live birth rate is much higher than that. So we're doing, we're doing something right. Um, and one of our new features is um, genetic screening of embryos, and I'm going to let Dr. Bukowski tell you about this. So uh, there are many years in our field where we go to the national meetings and we come back and say it's all the same stuff, not much has changed. This is a really exciting time in history because the genetics has, the doors have just blown open. The ability to genetically test individuals and embryos 
has changed so much. The new platform which we call CCS allows us to take a small amount of the, out the cells from the outside of an expanded day five embryo. Those cells will, will eventually make the placenta. And to attach hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of genetic probes so that we can get information about all of the DNA, all of the chromosomes for each embryo. And three or four years ago, when CCS just came on the scene, we were doing this in about 4% of our total patients. Right now, we do over 1,000 IVF cycles a year in our program, and uh, it's approaching 60%. And that is because it gives us such a wealth of information. It's so reassuring for um, our patients to know that the embryos are 46XX or 46XY, a normal genetic female or normal male. And uh, certainly the older you get, the older the eggs get, the more important this is. But what we found even in our egg donor so we, we have our own egg donor agency. We stand behind all those donors. We have screened them genetically and screened them for their fertility potential. Nevertheless, even though you're using a 22 or a 23 year old egg to make these embryos, one out of four will be chromosomally abnormal. So one out of four will not make a healthy baby. And you can't see that. These embryos look beautiful if you just look at them. You can't see it without doing the CCS. And the CCS does add some additional cost overall to test all the embryos is generally about $5,000. But it wouldn't surprise me if there comes a day very soon where all IVF is done with this. We are very fortunate because of, we, of one of our partners, Reaper Genetics, to have the first in-house next-gen sequencing CCS on the West Coast. And essentially that means it's the latest and greatest platform. A big part of what we talk to you about as as you come to, uh, to CSA, if this is something that you'd be interested in. It's not required, it's optional, but um, it's, it really can be quite helpful. I was telling the last group um, in our session that there was uh, a couple that I helped last year um, who wanted one child, and um, so we were going to transfer one embryo. There were eight embryos that we tested. Eight is actually probably the average number of blastocysts of advanced embryos that we would have in one treatment cycle. There were eight embryos we tested. Four were normal and four were abnormal. Now, in their case, the abnormal embryos, well, none of them would have grown into a baby because they had the sort of chromosomal abnormality that blocks development into a fetus. But knowing which one was normal uh, really did aid in making sure that the first treatment that we did into the surrogate was successful for them, and it was. Occasionally, we will find Down syndrome embryos when we do this testing, even from eggs from a woman in her 20s. There can be these rare chromosomal problems that could lead to an abnormal fetus. So the testing does provide additional information. Now, your surrogate will have testing done during the early part of her pregnancy to assess the fetal development. So even if you choose not to do genetic testing on the embryos, there will be some testing done while she's pregnant too make sure that the, the baby is, an, uh, is apparently a normal growing baby. Um, and um, just to, to summarize, um, these are the reasons that I think are important for you to consider coming to Portland. We do offer very high chances of success with the very first treatment that you do. And I'm co quite confident that our pregnancy rates are outstanding compared to other clinics you might consider. Um, we offer our own in-house egg donor agency. Um, we uh, are very skilled at doing the genetic testing. And you would only need to come to Portland once. Of course, we'd encourage you to come as often as you want. But we need you to come for a visit where we meet you in person at the clinic. We talk to you about the treatment. And we would freeze your sperm. Um, because we, use, we typically use frozen sperm for the treatment process. So you're welcome to come back to Portland for the embryo transfer of your, into your surrogate. If you're available, fantastic. If you're not available, we can sit with you on the day of the transfer so you can be there in alternative reality.